Hello, this is Dr. Stanley Kim. Do you like the paintings of Van Gogh? Yes, I love his paintings very much. They are fantastic. From doctor's perspectives, things makes me more interested in are his mysterious life and the strange disease he suffered. He suffered from a headache, abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, and seizure. Even he cut his ear. Many medical professionals feel that he suffered from acute intermittent porphyria or lead poisoning. Let's study porphyria and the lead poisoning today. Porphyria means purple in Greek. It's a group of genetic disease where porphyrins are building up, affecting many organs such as nerves or skin. Also, porphyria can occur without genetic predisposition. We will study two most common types acute intermittent porphyria, porphyria cutanea tarda. The type of porphyria Van Gogh suffered seems to be the acute intermittent porphyria. Patients have acute intermittent abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, and psychiatric symptoms such as delusion or hallucination, or even seizures. Those symptoms uh, Van Gogh suffered. It's due to porphobilinogen deaminase deficiency. So the uh, enzyme uh, converts the porphobilinogen to uh, hydroxymethylbilane. So when this enzyme is deficient, the porphobilinogen is uh, building up and the urine and the serum porphobilinogen levels are high, which is uh, uh, part of diagnostic test. But for real diagnosis, we measure the porphobilinogen deaminase uh, enzyme level rather than uh, measuring porphobilinogen level in the urine of blood because it's more convenient and uh, more accurate. For treatment, we give a high carbohydrate diet uh, because carbohydrates, carbohydrates inhibits the uh, aminolabulinic acid synthetase, the rate limiting enzyme of the porphyrin synthesis. So inhibiting that enzyme lowers the porphobilinogen production. When patients can't eat or drink due to nausea vomiting, we give 10% uh, glucose uh, IV infusion. The heme agents, such as hematin or heme arginate, helps to restore the depleted heme, which in turn inhibits the rate-limiting enzyme aminolabulinic acid synthetase, ALA synthetase, as a negative feedback mechanism, then the production of pro, pro, uh, porphobilinogen decreases and uh, relieves the symptoms. Heme is mostly in the red blood cells, so blood transfusion also will help to relieve the symptoms. But what about drinking blood? Yes, it will have the same effect of heme infusion to decrease the porphobilinogen production. So it's possible that patients with acute intermittent porphyria crave blood like like the vampire. Porphyria cutanea tarda is the most common uh, type of porphyria. The patients develop skin blistering in the area of high sun exposure. Look at this photo. The blisters, scars, pigmentation is due to photosensitivity by photoactivation of skin mast cell. The patient also has itching, scarring. It's due to uroporphyrinogen decarboxylase deficiency. The uroporphyrinogen uh, decarboxylase take the carboxyl group from uroporphyrinogen. Uh, uh, so if this enzyme is deficient, you can expect a high uroporphyrinogen level in the urine, which is, which is the diagnostic test. The causes of uh, porphyria cutanea tarda is of course genetic, but also could be from iron overload, excessive alcohol intake, or hepatitis C. Alcohol uh, increases iron absorption and acute hepatitis C increases serum ferritin level. Therefore, the porphyria cutanea tarda is associated with too much iron. So the treatment should be uh, uh, removing iron uh, or avoid iron and uh, avoid alcohol drinking. Interestingly, anti-malarial drug chloroquine helps the, the patients. The chloride ion 
in the uh, this chloroquine helps porphyrin uh, uh, become more water soluble, water soluble for better excretion into the urine. Now let's study the pathophysiology of porphyria with the heme synthesis. Also, we will discuss about bilirubin metabolism because when heme breaks down, it turns into bilirubin. It's all related. In the liver or bone marrow, succinocoenzyme A is produced through a Krebs cycle in the mitochondria. Uh, with glycine, it is converted to delta aminolabulinic acid uh, by uh, delta aminolabulinic acid synthetase. Let's call it ALA synthetase. The ALA synthetase is a rate limiting enzyme for heme synthesis. For example, carbohydrates inhibit the uh, uh, ALA uh, synthetase to slow down the heme synthesis, and the starvation stimulate this enzyme to encourage the uh, synthesis of heme. So patients with acute intermittent uh, porphyria, high carbohydrate diet or glucose infusion help the uh, uh, relieve symptoms because it will slow down this heme the cycle here. Now ALA converts to a porphobilinogen by ALA dehydratase. Uh, as the name indicates, ALA dehydratase take the uh, water molecule from ALA to make it uh, porphobilinogen, which is the ring form. Lead blocks this uh, ALA dehydratase. So the uh, ALA uh, having lots of uh, hydrogen and oxygen the components of water molecule will accumulate because it can't, can't be converted to porphobilinogen by uh, lead, which inhibits the ALA dehydratase. Now, uh, porphobilinogen uh, will become uh, hydroxymethylbilane and uh, uh, eventually uroporphyrinogen. The, the first enzyme involving the uh, conversion of Porphobilinogen is a porphobilinogen deaminase. This porphobilinogen is a, a kind of a stinky chemical because of many ammonium molecules. Uh, this porphobilinogen deaminase uh, get rid of those smelly ammonium molecules from porphobilinogen. Acute intermittent porphyria is caused by this porphob bilinogen deaminase deficiency. So the smelly porphobilinogens are building up, causing abdominal pain, seizure, mental changes. Now this porphobilinogen become uh, eventually uroporphyrinogen. And the uroporphyrinogen is converted to coproporphyrinogen. I want to mention that the euro means P. And the copro means poop in Greek. So by removing carboxyl group, uh, P become poop. This enzyme is uroporphyrinogen decarboxylase. Porphyria cutanea tarda is due to this uroporphyrinogen deaminase enzyme deficiency. So the urine uroporphyrinogen levels increase in the urine. This pink boy has a, a lots of skin lesions because too much uroporphyrinogens, which cause skin blisters when exposed to sunlight. Now the coproporphyrinogen enter the uh, mitochondria and then uh, become protoporphyrin, the real uh, prototype of porphyrin heme. To become a real heme, it needs ferrochelase. Ferrochelates chelate these uh, ferrous ion molecules. Lead blocks this ferrochelates and inhib inhibits heme synthesis, causing microcytic anemia. We studied that lead also blocks the uh, ALA dehydratase. Uh, so the lead blocks both ALA dehydratase and the ferrochelates. So the lead uh, cause accumulation of aminolabulinic uh, acid and uh, protoporphyrin. Now the heme molecules are released 
after the RBC lifespan or due to hemolytic anemia, heme is converted to biliverdin. The verde means green in Latin, and the biliverdin has a greenish color. In fact, the bile juice are kind of greenish. The biliverdin is converted to indirect bilirubin. The indirect bilirubin is lipid soluble and has to be conjugated to become direct bilirubin, which is uh, water soluble. This direct bilirubin will be uh, released to uh, duodenum with the bile salt to digest food. The en enzyme involved in the conversion of indirect bilirubin to direct bilirubin is glucuronyl transferase. So uh, when this glucuronyl transferase enzyme is deficient or blocked, indirect bilirubin cannot be conjugated to become a direct bilirubin. So the level of indirect bilirubin arises. There are several uh, conditions that uh, have this glucuronyl transferase problems. The most common condition is Gilbert syndrome. Uh, caused by mild deficiency of the glucuronyl transferase, then the indirect bilirubin cannot be conjugated, then the, uh, uh, the indirect bilirubinemia uh, develops. Most of the time, the indirect bilirubin is only mildly elevated, so no treatment is necessary. The Gilbert syndrome is very common, occurring in 5% of general population. Interestingly, it affects more men than women. If you really need to lower the indirect bilirubin uh, in patients with Gilbert syndrome, you can give phenobarbital, which is the cytochrome P40 enzyme inducer. The cytochrome P40 will induce the deficient glucuronyl transferase and make the enzyme work better, and the bilirubin level will go down. Another congenital disease is a Kreigler Nazar syndrome. Uh, the enzyme is almost completely absent in this syndrome, so patients develop very severe indirect bilirubinemia and the current ictus in the infant or babies causing encephalopathy. The excreted indirect bilirubin helps to digest food in the intestine, and uh, when it reaches the large intestine, it converts, it's converted to urobilinogen by uh, bacteria. The majority of urobilinogens are excreted to feces through the uh, uh, urobilin and the storcobilin. The urobilin and storcobilin uh, colors the stool uh, to a normal brownish color. Now, what if the uh, uh, patient has, has a, um, a, a biliary uh, uh, blockage, so the bilirubin can be released to the intestine, or patients take the uh, broad-spectrum antibiotics killing the uh, bacteria, which is essential to convert the direct bilirubin to urobilinogen, then you can't have this urobilin or strocobilin, and the stool color become a, a clay, clay, clay color. The part of urobilinogen uh, will be reabsorbed to the liver, and uh, another parts will go to the kidney to be excreted to the uh, urine. Many doctors also believe Van Gogh had lead poisoning because oil colors is a high lead contents in those days. Children with mild lead poisoning usually asymptomatic, but they can develop abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, cognitive impairment, seizure, and anemia, uh, just like the symptoms Van Gogh had. Uh, obtain a history of pica, like an ingestion of uh, paint chips or uh, lead uh, toast. Lab test will show the uh, high blood le uh, lead level and the high RBC protoporphyrin uh, level, as we discussed before. X-ray can show the uh, lead line in the long bones and the uh, lead chips in the uh, plain abdominal X-ray. Gum can show Burton's line, the bluish line in the gum and the blood smear will show the basophilic stippling in the RBCs. Thank you.